You're going to watch three feisty Fido sessions that I did, did last week. Different types of dogs, big dogs, little dogs, young dogs, not so young dogs. And watch how I introduce these dogs to my dog and to groups and learn what you can do to do the same type of intro introductions. This is Icrium. He is a one and a half year old male pit mix. He has gone after dogs before. Okay, this is serious business. He first needs to meet my dog. We are going to use a muzzle, I think, for the off-leash meeting, maybe even for the on-leash meeting. He has a gentle leader on. Why are gentle leaders so good? Because if they go at a dog, their whole head turns. Where the teeth are, turns. Now, I want you to watch how I come up to the dog. You guys have seen me, you've heard me say, don't let your reactive dog jump on you. Watch as I walk up. I'm not going to change my gait as he jumps on me. I'm going to knee him, and I'm going to walk into him. It's enough. If I have to break a fight up in five minutes, that me and me continuing to walk into him is going to have an impact on him. He's like, whoa, that guy, I jumped on him and he just kept, now that I wasn't that harsh. I was actually very nice, but the guy, I did something different from what most people do. Most people stop, the person takes the hit and the dog goes, oh yeah, I just hit him and bounced off of them. I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to keep walking here. I can't tell you how important that little stuff is. He just now sees prints, okay? Sees prints, and he goes, he goes, oh, I see a dog. I'm just going to go over there. And I go, no, you're not. You barely caught it in the video. But I'm like, no, you, you, you're you, you on a leash. So he got a little correction. That's number two you guys need to know. It's enough going at dogs because you feel like going at dogs. I was way more patient there because he stopped. He was way better. He's saying, I want to get the gentle leader off because I feel like going to see this dog. I don't care what you feel like. You've attacked dogs before. We're over you just doing something because you feel like doing it. So he just, okay, now we're going to let Prince out. Uh, I do have a muzzle on him. Okay. So muzzle, right, a little smell. He does get stiff quite a bit in this, okay? It's a lot of stiffness, a lot of stiffness. But he looks not terrible. He's stiff. He's hard to read, right? He doesn't look good. He doesn't look happy. He hasn't met that many dogs. He's got a couple doggy friends but he's gone at quite a few dogs. He is trying to get the muzzle off. Doesn't matter. I don't care. It's The muzzle's conditioned pretty well. Look at me getting ready if he goes. So Pr Prince is just standing up tall, marking. We're just trying to... But and why muzzles are good, guys? Because you can relax. Muzzles are awesome because you can relax. No one's going to get hurt in this situation. If you have another good dog, like Prince... Put a muzzle on the reactive dog. No one's going to the vet. That's big. And when you are tense, the dogs can sense your tenseness. And they can sense it through a tight leash, by the way. That's why you should always have a loose leash. Okay, I'm done with the muzzle. He looks okay. The muzzle's affecting his behavior a little bit, so we're going to take it off. Plus, I have a gentle leader on him. So I can, if he does anything, I can correct him and his head turns. That's why gentle leaders are so good, you guys. Because, look at me, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm moving with the dog, I'm ready. If he does anything, he's going to get corrected. Prince has done nothing to him. He can't do anything to Prince. This is Prince's house. Prince has been nothing but nice. Watch right now. And he's going to Prince. Pop. And that was not with good intentions. I promise you. Pop. I do that little leg flip you've seen me do. It's enough. And he checks in with me, barely. But he's getting a pop every time... He goes at a dog. It's not okay. Don't be soft with your reactive dog. Prince, I, I'm faking him out. You want to go, Prince? Go, Prince. Same thing's going to happen. Bink. Same thing. Three of them. Keep the leash loose. See how I gave him three corrections instead of a tight pull away? Because I want him to make the choice to come to me. If I pull him away, there's no choice being made. But this is it, guys. This is a big deal, what you're seeing. This is... 50 to maybe 40% of the dogs that we get are dogs like this. This guy has gone at dogs before. I'm telling the owner to pet Prince because we want him to know that the owner likes Prince. I do this with every single session. I don't always talk about it on these videos, but I do it with every session. And now he's meeting Prince. Is it a coincidence that after I'm ready, I'm ready, he hasn't met many dogs. This is what dogs do when they haven't met many dogs. They kind of, I'm nervous. I'm, I'm not nervous. I'm ready. Okay. Now, muzzle's back on. He's still unleashed, but we're letting other dogs out. He already looks better with these dogs. Does he look better with them because 
they're not, they're, you know, Prince is unneutered, maybe doesn't like that. Uh, these guys are neutered. Uh, they're a little more happy-go-lucky than Prince, I would say. They're older, they're just chiller. He likes them. He likes them a lot. Okay, this is looking good. So, let the other one out. Look at his tail. Totally different than Prince. He looks way better. Still a little wag in there. Oh, but Joel, wags don't always mean happiness. Yeah, they don't always mean happiness. I've seen dogs fight and they're wagging. But it's it's one of the things that you need to watch for. Okay, you saw him when he met Prince. He had that stiff tail the whole time. I don't think there was ever a wag. That's important to know. Okay, so still meeting, still meeting. And then in a minute, we're going to get to the other session, which was kind of a crazy puppy. But a lot of meetings here. Just want you to kind of keep watching this. But it turns out, you know, pretty good. He is getting better. Oh, I do a little, like, butt touch because he's pulling. There's no pulling. Can't pull on a leash. All right. So muzzle, I think I'm taking the muzzle off. Sit. Tell him to sit down. Still have the gentle leader on. I can't tell you how good. Oh, there, we let another dog, Leo, to me. But he can't pull to the dog. Can't pull to the dog. I do that butt touch you guys have seen me do. You take leashes in your left hand, right hand touches the butt. It's to flip them. Okay, they have the leverage when they're pulling in that way. They have all the leverage when you are right behind them. You've got to touch them on the side, flip them a little bit. Now the leash is loose. Always a loose leash. You, the only time the, there, I kind, it's kind of tight right there, but just for a second. He's got a muzzle on so I can relax. Use, you guys have a reactive dog. Watch some videos, learn how to condition a muzzle, and then use the muzzle. Use the muzzle. Some people are like, oh, well, the dog knows it can't bite on a muzzle. No, it doesn't. It just doesn't. Dogs act different on a muzzle because they have this thing on their mouth. I've seen... Hundreds of dogs, slowed down video, seen open mouth inside of a muzzle trying to bite a dog. They don't really get it. They just know that something's on them, but they don't go, I'm going to be nice because I'm on a muzzle and I can't bite. Their brain does not work like that. All right, now he's off leash. And he's got a muzzle on still. We got to be careful. These are other people's dogs besides uh, my dog. Okay, Luna is coming up. Eight-month-old German Shepherd. This next session is like sessions you've seen before, where I'm just going to let this eight... Well, now, why why do I deal with this eight-month-old German Shepherd that's coming up different than this one? He's eight months. Aggression is learned. I've worked with a lot of killer whales. They get better at aggression. All right, so here's the uh, Luna eight-month-old dog. And I'm just like, I'm letting Prince out. I don't care. This dog can free... It's never met a dog. This dog can flip out. Look at the hair. This dog can flip out if it wants. Okay? We got to supercharge the socialization. Okay? Prince is doing play bows. He's not being horrible. This guy's kind of chasing him away. That's fine. This dog's eight months old. Our window is closing to socialize this dog. And Prince is a nice dog on his property. We're like, yeah, play. Get used to him. Get used to him. He also has a lot of energy. We got to get that energy out. Prince is being a good boy. Is it a lot for the dog? Yeah, it's a lot for the dog. Will the dog be fine? Yeah, the dog will be fine. The dog's fine. People, some commenters are always like, oh my god, you flooded that dog. The dog has an acre to run away. He's choosing not to. But he's got. we got to supercharge the uh, socialization. There's a lot of barking, by the way. A lot. Like, it was almost like, oh my gosh, I just want to stop this just so the barking stops. But the truth is, I was like, bark it out. Run it out. Get used to this dog. This is a good dog. Look, now there's some, oh, I want to smell him. Oh, I want to smell him. These dogs like this, some trainers are like, you have to go slow. I could have gone a little slower. But this feels right to me. Good dog like Prince. Let him with the good dog. Play bow. Prince is doing like play bows. Does he know what a play bow means? I don't know. Maybe not. But... He's doing play bells. Okay, that's that session. I'm keeping these short and sweet. All right, this is a little dog named Kiki. I think Kiki's like one year old. Now, Kiki, again, we're going to do like the German Shepherd where we're just letting Prince out. Why am I not too worried about Kiki? Because Kiki's tiny. And tiny dogs don't do damage like big dogs. 
So even if Prince got nipped a little bit, he, it might be good for the little dog. He'd let him know, knock it off. I don't want Prince to get nipped, but okay. he's never been nipped. This dog has okay. mommy and family issues, big have. time. Sorry, okay, They've done go. as good a job as they can, but the dog is just, they've been home a lot, right? And the dog has just uh, been with them all the time. It's, it's time for this dog to get away from the family a little bit. I told the family to spread out. Why did I tell the family to spread out? And look, he does. Uh, now, I, actually, I want to talk to you about that. He jumped, he jumped, he jumped. She said down. He didn't jump for about a split second and she pet him. I told her later in the session to not do that. You, And I see people do it all the time, by the way. Dog jumps on them, they sit down, and then they pet. The behaviors are too close. The dog thinks it's getting pet for jumping. You got, you guys got to stop that. Okay? Give it a little knee. Knock it off its balance. Not so it falls, but just so it it is knocked off off balance a little bit in midair. And then wait about five seconds, then pet them. That was a quarter second when she pet. Okay, Kiki doesn't even see Prince. She sees him right now. Well, look at mommy, mommy, mommy. I want my mommy. And she sees Prince, and I let Prince go. And Prince isn't backing down. Prince is standing tall like Prince should and like every dog should. Goes at him a little bit and Prince stands there and just looks. Prince does exactly what he's supposed to do. I told the family to spread out. If they're all five together and Prince comes up, Kiki's going to be horrible. And that's one reason like when you guys, people call me and they're like, my dog goes at dogs at Starbucks, right? People... For you international folks, people in America take their dogs Everybody, everywhere. So they go to restaurants, they go to Starbucks, right and the dogs go at other dogs. They're they're right by you, and it's hard to not when the dog's on a leash. But but you gotta. That's why they're going at other dogs. They're like they're not even protecting you. They're resource guarding you. This dog isn't protecting the family. This dog is just saying, "This is my family. Get out of the circle of trust." So in a minute, when I'm look at this, just get out of here. Get out of here. This is another one like that German Shepherd where I'm just like, we got to shake this dog up. Its world has been too chill. It's not, it's not, it, the life isn't stimulating enough. I want to stimulate this dog. And then later I'm going to tell her what to do with that jump. I don't know when I'm going to tell, but we got to get rid of that jump. That is not great at all. All right, so I'm talking to her. Um, probably about the jumping or petting a prince. So here's what I'm telling him. I want you to pet Prince and I want you to tell Kiki to get out of here. First time ever, Kiki is going to be rejected by his mom and Kiki needs to be rejected by his mom. So petting Prince, petting Prince and she goes, go. Keep petting Prince. Okay. You get it? I do this all the time. All the time. This dog needs to, to be on the outside looking in occasionally from the family. So everybody, I think I have the dad do it and I have maybe the kids do it, but it's enough. It's enough. Dog is on the outside looking in. Probably the first time mom told Kiki to go and Kiki, you can't do what you want. Very powerful. Very powerful thing. All right. I brought the family together because Kiki wasn't bad at all. She just like kind of ran up to Prince and said, hey, get out of here, Prince. And it wasn't even that bad. So we now bring them together. And so if Kiki's, I, Kiki's not going to hurt Prince. So I'm just like, okay, everyone come together now. All right, let's see. I think dad's going to now, oh yeah, I have him grab Prince's collar and pet Prince, pet Prince. And mom, right? We're stepping it up, stepping it up. Mom and dad can pet whoever they want. She tells him go. She tells him go. Or her go. Mom and dad can pet who... Oh my gosh, that jump. Okay, that's fine. That's enough. We, we got our point across. I was like, okay. I, I wasn't frustrated. I was like, okay, let Prince go. But that jump is the main thing we got to get rid of. I don't think I have it on video where I tell her to not do that. But that is, that is the worst. It just shows such mommy issues. It's not healthy for a dog or a child to have that many mommy issues. It's just not. They can't do it. This dog needs a shakeup in life. This dog needs a board and train or maybe not a board and train. Might be a little too much. This dog should be coming out for more sessions. Uh, next session, I'll probably have the family stay 
up top and then uh, take Kiki down in the pasture with a bunch of dogs because Kiki needs it. All right, those are the three videos. One pretty feisty dog, two not so feisty dogs, but dogs that needed a shake up in life. Dogs that needed to be exposed to more things. Oh, I am going to let May shout another dog. So I want you guys to see that. So letting her out in a minute. Meisha is a bold dog. Meisha will run up to Kiki and not care in any way. And that's what I want. For the first session with Prince, I was like, okay, I don't know what Kiki's going to do. We got to be careful a little bit. But now Kiki's not looking to hurt anybody. Now, these three sessions, all of them were here because these dogs are feisty. They've gone at dogs before, every single one of them, or at least leash reactive. That's why we're filming. I don't film my normal sessions. So now we're letting Meisha out. And let's see how this goes. More jumping on mom. Meisha's pulling. I'm over the Meisha pulling. And let her go. Here we go. And Meisha's out. Smelling. Shake. We gotta. Sh we gotta shake this dog's life up. Look at mom's all nervous. Which people get like that. They don't know what their dog's gonna do. Look at she tells Meisha kind of get out of here, and Meisha goes, "I don't really care." Meisha. Back to mom. Back to mom. How are we gonna ever break this mom thing? Oh, Meisha jumps on the lady. How are we gonna ever break this mommy issue without stimulating this dog? without getting this dog with other dogs, without shaking this dog's life up. It's not going to happen. I brought out Meisha because I knew Meisha just wouldn't care and would just do whatever she wants. And that's going to shake this dog life, life up a lot. Jumping on dad. Come on. So that's the video. Meisha. That's the three videos. You guys saw how I introduced them. Hopefully you learned a little bit about body language. Hopefully you learned um, what to do when the dog goes into another dog. And then you can take this home and work with your own dog. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.